I, I must be doing something wrong. I haven't died in the last few seconds. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Yu Suzuki Gameworks Volume 1 on the Dreamcast. Initially I was thinking I would do separate videos for each of the games on it. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play all five games in one video. You lucky people, I'm going to bore you rigid. But what the heck. Uh, I, I'm going to start at Space Harrier and just work my way through really. Um, yeah, why not? I guess we're going to be doing them in kind of more or less chronological order. I don't know if you read any of that. I didn't. Push start button. I'm wearing the wrong glasses. That was just uncomfortable. Here we go. Uh, I've played all of these games on other systems. Most notably... Um... Oh, that's interesting. Um, 32X. So... This works with the analog stick and the D-pad. Nah, whoops. I think it's the Saturn version where it doesn't, or rather where it self-centers like this. Oh, bollocks. And the 32X version where it doesn't, and I prefer it when it doesn't self-center because you can get yourself into a really good position, like exactly where you want to be, and then it just... Oh, if you're not paying attention, it'll just go back to the middle. Where, with the uh, 32X and, say, Mega Drive versions, though like the Mega Drive version is visually inferior, you take your finger off and it stays exactly where it is. And with this, do it with the analog stick, it's self-centering, whoops. Do it with the D-pad and it's not, and that is great. I believe the resolution on this is higher than on the other, like the, the Saturn or Dreamcast versions. I honestly, I, without playing them one directly after the other, I can't tell if that's true or not. I suppose, you know, if I was going to be thorough and uh, do some kind of proper analysis, I would play. I'd do a comparison video. I'd, whoops, oh you burk. I'd play them one after the other so we could compare resolutions and stuff. But I'm doing a piss poor job here. Shoot him in the face. Oops. Actually, I don't know, he seems to be he's changing colour anyway, so maybe we're. Whoops. Oops. You bugger. Oh, there we go. In your face, dragon geezer. Yeah, run. Go on, run. It's good for your health. Never mind if you've got a jetpack. You can run, mate. Get some exercise, as whatever band that was, Blur, said. I wasn't a fan of Blur. Though I did like, um... Was it Girls and Boys or Boys and Girls? I don't know. One of, the, uh, one of those. I liked that song. I didn't much like anything else they did. None of which has anything to do with this video. Or this game. Especially not this game. There we go. We're getting into the flow of it now. Uh, I, ooh, I, I must be doing something wrong. I haven't died in the last few seconds. Definitely prefer playing it with the D-pad. Um, find yourself a position on the screen and st stay there and die. Like that. You're doing great, he says. Well, you're not paying attention then. Oh, mushroom, mushroom. Oh my god, there's not mushroom. <sighs> Sorry, I'll get me coat. Oof, oof, oh bollocks. Are we dead yet? Yeah, we're dead yet. Okay, that's Space Harrier. How do I get... How do I get... How do I get... Uh, I want to get back to the menu. And I want that to move faster. 
I lost. Where is it? First, I don't. I, I want. I want to. Oh, okay. That seemed to do something. Yay! Y and B exits you back to the menu. Okay, so we'll do the other game on here that says it's 1985. And we'll play Hang On. I'm kind of surprised they've chosen Hang On and not Super Hang On. Um, did you read all of that? Good. Tell me what it said. Don't actually tell me what it said. Um, okay. Oh, that was good. That was trying it with the D-pad. I'm, I'm wanting to see, will it maintain, yeah, it maintains its tilt level. Okay, this one is better to play with the analog stick, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because you don't want to maintain your angle of lean. So I guess this one doesn't have, does this have the turbo? I'm pushing other buttons. They're not doing anything, so. No turbo, because it's hang on and not super hang on. And there seems to be, I think, less stuff at the side of the road, maybe. I don't know. I might be wrong about that. It's just... It seems somehow more... Lim oh, God, limited. I did play this in the arcades. I never played Space Harrier in the arcades. Um... But I did play this. Both sit. I think the sit-on version was Super Hang On, wasn't it? And um, this was like a stand-up one with just handlebars. Oh, I didn't do very well at all. Doesn't surprise me. Come on, let's have another go. Oh. Hey. Oh, okay, we're just going to be A, because I couldn't work out what button to press, because I'm clever. Go faster, you muppet. Freddie Spencer race suit, which is cool. Freddie Spencer was bloody amazing. Other riders would get their um, knee down. No, it wasn't Freddie Spencer who got his elbow down, was it? It was that, oh God. It was some French geezer on a Galois Blonde Yamaha. He got his elbow down. I can't remember his name. Freddie Spencer used to... That was it. Other riders would slide the back wheel. Deliberately. Um, going around corners. You know, um, oversteer and all that lot. And they'd, they'd kick the back end out. He would deliberately slide the front wheel and the back wheel at the same time. I mean, like a four-wheel drive drifting if it was a car. But he'd, he'd be drifting the front and the back. Um, and he was the only rider who did that that I'm aware of and so he was kind of amazing but he, he was only around for a little while maybe three seasons something like that it seemed like that won the uh, I don't know if it was the 125 definitely the 250 and 500 cc championship in the same year I don't know if the 125 was in there as well but it was very impressive and he wore these colors oops yeah, I'm really sucking badly at this. I don't know if I'm doing better than my previous go. I didn't really notice what my score or time or anything was on my previous go. I'm kind of like that with games, arcade games. I don't care what my score is, I just want a long game. The longer I'm playing, the better. Value for money, that's what I care about. The, the, the red stripy bits at the side, chevrons, are we going to call them? Whatever. The, the, the curbs, that looks pretty awful. That doesn't look good to me. That doesn't look like my brain tells me it looked in the arcade. But I might be wrong about that. Because it was a long while ago. Uh, yeah, I think I did better than my previous go, but not by much. Okay, that's hang on. Uh, a. Why can I not? Come on. I seem unable to. No. 
solve it. Okay then, outrun, because we're doing them in order, theoretically. Read all of that? Good. I haven't. Push the start button. I did play this in the arcades. Um, it is one of... Sure, I've seen better ver. Well, I don't know about better versions. It, I just oh, my brain says it should be higher resolution than this, but who knows? Someone else who isn't me. Um, gear control. Where is the gear control? There. Does that also take us down a gear? No, that does. Okay, that's a, that's pretty cool. Oops, get off me, you bastard. Yeah, I I played this in the arcades, and um, in the Agora in Wolverton, which was my local arcade, you wanted to know that. And I was impressed with it from a technical standpoint, in the way that it threw the sprites around so rapidly, and the undulating landscape. Those things impress me. But actually, as a game, I didn't find it all that fun. I found it artificially difficult because you're going so insanely fast and you... Oh God, I don't know which way I'm going. Oh, it doesn't seem to matter. Um. You'd be going insanely fast, out of necessity, to be able to get further than I did just then. And so you would basically... I can't see where... Me... Oh. Come on. Accept my letter, you... Stupid! It, it, um, I can, I can move it, but I can't. It, oh, that's. I probably wanted to pull the trigger. That's. It's inconsistent, actually. The buttons it accepts to, um, for you to enter your letters are different on each game. That's stupid. What was I saying? Yes have to go really fast, but when you're going really fast, while it looks impressive, it's actually bloody di bloody difficult if you're a mere mortal like me, and perhaps a rather limited one at that, it's damn near impossible to not crash into stuff or go off the road. Um, helps to change gear as well. It's it's like it's just it gets too narrow there's not enough room if there's traffic in each lane and you're going flat out like that so you're sliding you can't when you're sliding like that you can't turn any further into the corner so if you've got a car in front of you you're kind of screwed especially if you're on the outside you know it's like go off the track or run into the car or brake which you don't want to do and you'll probably still run into it anyway I find it not great, to be honest. I prefer the likes of pole position, which technically inferior, but more controllable. Why we? Why? Why did we slow down? I didn't slow down. I didn't tell it to slow down. Oh, you see this, this, that. Oh don't like annoys me but the way it hurls the sprites around that that all does impress me you ass they're all gear me wrong gear I was wondering why couldn't I, why couldn't I overtake a pickup truck in a Ferrari Testarossa? Oh, because I'm an idiot who can't manage to handle a car with only two gears. 
Oh. Oh, come on. Ooh. Oh, my God. Ugh. Yeah. Still not a fan of that game. So can we, uh-huh, there we go, trigger. Ass. I know that's not how you spell ass, but tough. Get off. Afterburner. So, I'm guessing Afterburner and not Afterburner 2, I wasn't paying attention, so we're going to have no thrust control. There will be no thrusting in this game. That seems overexposed. Yeah, it is Afterburner. I wonder why they chose Afterburner and not Afterburner 2. Like, why did they choose Hang On and not Super Hang On? Like the Chewbacca defence, it makes no sense. And I don't know what button I want that one then, I guess. And 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 that. Okay. And it doesn't respond to D-pad at all. So, yeah, it's another one where the controls are inconsistent or something. Whoa! Oh, you bugger. But it is just... This is another one I played a lot in the arcades. I loved it. So, um, it's never quite the same without that big force feedback joystick. That was great. That was probably... probably what drew me to the game more than the um, the super fast graphics and, and all the whoops yeah handling on this is actually inferior to the 32x version because you got this compulsory self-centering I would rather not have to do that ass Uh, no, we're not going to continue with that. I don't actually think I can... I didn't... Come on, let me out. Let me out. Yeah. I don't want to push the start button. I want to get out. Oh, I don't want to... Come on. I guess we're going to play again. Yay. I do like the, the roll. Go away. Oh. It gets kind of random when you, oh balls, you know, you see missiles coming in so you roll, you do a barrel roll and um, you can't tell if they're going to hit you or not and you can't see them because it's just it moves faster than my eyes can keep up with. So I'm just like, do that barrel roll and pray. Whoops. And that praying doesn't work, for those who didn't know. Oh. 
Yeah, not doing so well. No, no, I said no. Now let me out of the game, please. Let me out. Let me out. I can't exit this, that's really quite annoying. If I press start, it'll just take me back into the game. Don't want to. <coughs> there. Okay, we're back in again after a reboot. Power Drift, 1988. I think this was the last, was it the last of the uh, Super Scalar games that used this particular architecture? It may have been, or I might be wrong. Um, but I think it's say it's probably the most impressive no it is the most impressive on this thing what is the difference between like whichever car you pick don't know I've got a green one um, that just looked like he was going backwards it messes with my eyes and I'm pretty sure the perspective when it does oh, does that thing is wrong now there is a gear control on here and I'm not sure what what it is, oh, or how you select your gear. I have no idea. I find that quite difficult. So this is meant to be... Hurry up, hurry up. Hurry. Yeah. Where does it tell me what gear I'm in? Ah, right down, da oops, oops, down there, on, there we go. Oh, okay, so you're in high gear, and if you want low gear, you've literally got to hold your finger on the button. That's weird. But it kind of works. Defaults to, okay, right. Well, now I know that, I might get away faster when I start. Continue. No, we're going to, oh, whatever. I want to start again at the start because what's the point of continuing when you came last on the first lap? Welcome to blah blah blah. Get on with it. Gonna need it. Look at my haircut. Here we go. I do like this game. I, it amuses me the attempts that were made to to replicate it on hardware that was in no way up to the job. I mean, the PC Engine did a, a respectable attempt, given what well, the kind of hardware that it was running on. Um, the Amiga version was interesting. You could see what they were trying to do. Um, Saturn version is obviously like well, these days it's the second best version because I would say now that even thi this, back in the day this was the best version, but now I would say the best version is on the uh, 3DS. But I've seen other versions, is there a Spectrum version? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm aware of the Commodore 64 version and it's, um, yeah. I think it's coming off 64 version I'm thinking of. Where did I finish on that? I'm, I'm through to the next round, so I can't have been like, oh, you bugger, get off. I hate this bit. Don't like it. Oops. Sec Why does he speak so fast? Ugh. It's like go-kart pinball. I'm not sure it's a go kart, it's kind of like a Caterham 7. Oh, bloody hell. I'll give you. Oh. Oops. And I'm 7th. And I'm 4th. And I'm out. Mm, continue? Yes, please, we will, because that was interesting. 
I don't know if it was fun, but it was interesting. I do find the game kind of... Uh, it is one of those that is technically impressive, but actual playability is kind of limited. Uh, oh, God. It's too fast and too... Too difficult. <laughs> you gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta be on bloody amphetamines to play this game. I think. Oh, especially this bit. Put it in. Put it in low gear. Definitely. Final lap, but we're still not going to get into third. There seems to be some, like, steering assist going... Oh, bugger off. Yeah, it's fairly impossible. I have played this in the arcades. I don't recall if I did better than that. And I say the arcades, I don't actually mean arcades. I mean, I played this at replay in Blackpool a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, it's still going. Well, he can just sit there because I'm done. Uh, I suck a bit too much. So that is uh, Yu Suzuki Game Works Volume 1. It's... I find it more interesting than I find it fun. Um, partly, I think, because none of these games have optimum controls. Uh, uh, a Dreamcast controller is not ideal for any of these. The one that does it the best is um, Space Harrier because it gives you the choice of self-centering or not given on whether you use the analog stick or the d-pad all of the others I'm just like no it, it it's, it's just it doesn't control well enough looks great frame rate resolution all of that lot number of colors on screen I suppose arcade perfect but if you can't control it well enough it just doesn't really matter so certainly worth a download and I guess if you're a collector uh, the original is worth having as a, a curiosity really but to play I would not spend significant money to play this I would just play them on MAME or something and customize the controls you know ha have your own controller and, and get it spot on mmm Okay, thank you for watching. Hello, today's question for Q&A is from Lee Price, link to his channel down there. He asks, for Q&A, a bit of fun with this one. If you could go back in time and see three things or people, who or what would they be? And I can't bloody read that with these glasses. <laughs> who or what would they be? And what one piece of advice would you give to yourself? Do you know what? This is a really, really bloody difficult question. Um, I'm, I'm grappling with this one because I actually don't know. I, I've got one answer and another two. I just I don't know. So whatever I come out with in this video, video I've made up as I'm going along. My first answer would be um thing I would... I'm presuming when it's like going back and seeing things or people, I'm not trying to change anything. It's just like for the experience. Um, so I'm not changing history. Except maybe the piece of advice I give myself. But anyway, um, first thing I would like to go back and see is... Was it called The Great Exhibition? Um, Victorian age Crystal Palace showed the original Crystal Palace uh, not the football club anyway um, yeah just the exhibition of was it world engineering and whatnot or was it British and engineering and inventions and science and all of that lot all the cool new stuff it was like E3 for the Victorian era um, I, I'm fascinated by the idea of it. Something about, I mean, it, the modern world was just starting to happen. Um, 
science and creativity and genius and whatnot, and here it all was. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that. And that's the only one I actually can think of an answer for, because <laughs> there's a whole lot of stuff that I find interesting to know it happened historically. But would I want to have been there? I kind of don't care. Um, it's good to know these things happened. Would being there have made a difference? Don't know. I suppose, um, I mean, it's a terrible thing to say, but... I, I, Hindenburg with a camera <laughs> capture that I mean the, the moment was captured but be there with a modern cam camera I don't know I mean that's morbid and a bit twisted and wrong so maybe not um, definitely not the Titanic <sighs> unless I happen to be viewing it from an airship though knowing my luck it would be the Hindenburg um, yeah I kind of really don't have answers for this. People I'd like to meet if I could go back. Uh, they say never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. It's like, I think I would like to have met David Bowie, but would I? Don't know. I haven't, have I, I have met some sort of slightly famous people in my time. Um, my experience of famous people is that, I suppose the thing is, when I met them, and it, it was a, at a TV studio, uh, cast, presenters of a um, gadget show, as it was back then, largely different people now, I think, partly, something, um, I suspect they have their, or had their presenter head on while I was there, it's like, I do it. While I'm here, I've got my, my, my YouTube head on. I'm a lot more energetic, in-your-face. I mean, I'm not an in-your-face kind of person, but I'm more... More. <laughs> this, this is me with, like, turbo switched on. And I think it's like that. In a, in a TV studio and so even though they like weren't on camera they had their presenting head on and they were quite annoying <laughs> these were not people I would want to spend time with in that particular while well, they're in that headspace I've got no idea what kind of people they are outside of that setting probably far more tolerable so um, that's my experience of famous people. So it's like, who, who would I really want to meet? Kind of don't really want to because they it would either be a very disappointing experience or annoying, maybe. Though, who knows, some people might just be gen... Actually, I, I do know who I would like to... I mean, we're not even talking past sense. Would a... Per, a, a a public figure who I would like to meet, sit down, have a chat, Jeremy Corbyn. I know, politics, and he, he's, he's stepped down as leader now and everything, but I can't think of a more genuinely nice person, public figure, who, who I'm aware of, who I actually give a crap what they think about anything. So, yeah. Um, if I could go back, what piece of advice would I give myself? Well, I suppose there are two things, actually. One would be a piece of career... No, oh, God, yeah. Okay. Do your bloody homework. Take it a bit more seriously. I grew up in a home environment where the value of education was not recognised. It was in the 80s, it was under Thatcher, unemployment was enormous, uh, parents were largely uneducated and definitely not remotely intellectual, and the value of education just wasn't seen, wasn't encouraged, it was, what do you want to do that for, what's the point, you won't find a job anyway, there aren't any jobs, so don't bother. And I, when you're surrounded by that, you kind of buy into it. 
So to say I underachieved is an understatement. I didn't give a crap because I didn't see the point. That and I hated school because I didn't fit in and it was an ordeal. So, uh, yeah, I didn't study nearly as hard as I should have, didn't achieve nearly as much as I could have, didn't get enough O-levels to do A-levels, and without A-levels you couldn't do university, and I should have I should have tried harder if I'd have got... I needed one more O-level. I, I failed a couple of O-levels. It's like I sat seven, I passed four. I needed five. Should have tried at maths. That was the, that was the one. That's the lack of maths has held me back for like my entire life. And I I can do maths. I just can't retain the method. Uh, and that's just really lack of practice and stuff. Um, on the IT course I did with the OU, I was amazed at my own ability to do some pretty advanced maths. Once I'd been shown how to do it, it was like holy crap, I can actually do this. I can't do it in my head. Not enough working memory. Um, yes, yes, if I could go back and tell myself anything, it would be take school a bit more seriously. Put in the effort. It'll change your life. And I didn't. And I have gone down a track that is nowhere near what it could have been. But hey-ho... Uh, other things I would tell myself, which is kind of, it sounds like the opposite of what I've just said, but it's not, it's, don't worry about it, but I'm not referring to education, I'm worry. I'm worrying more, talking more about what people think about me, people's perception of me, because I can be a bit of an oddball and very uncomfortable in social situations, and part of that is the concern that they're thinking, well, hell's wrong with this guy or, or whatever where well, they're probably not thinking that at all don't know um, but I worry about it or used to worry about it and I would find situations really really stressful because I was thinking about what these other people were thinking where they probably weren't thinking anything at all and I would go round and round and round in circles in my head until I'd just like be a big ball of anxiety and stress and just had to get out of wherever I was um, yes, my advice would be, don't worry about it, doesn't matter, it's all just, no one knows what the hell they're doing and mostly what they're talking about, it doesn't matter. But me being me, I wouldn't take that advice from myself anyway and would continue to do exactly what I was doing, because <laughs> I'm a stubborn twat who doesn't take advice. <sighs> yeah. That, that is possibly one of the hardest questions I've had to answer. Um, interesting though, good good bit of a... Uh, it's good to look at yourself and ask questions of yourself. Mm, okay. Anyone else who's got a question they would like answering in a video like this, leave a question in the comments below. Begin with 4 Q and a so that I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. Ah, there you are. Have you finished polishing the silverware like I asked you? Yes? Splendid. Here's 50 pence. Now, go and click the subscribe button like a good peasant. <laughs>